Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Tis I, the one and only Archer with Archer Astrology. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Guys, it's that time again. Time to take a little look at the energies from the universe for the week ahead and see how they will play into everything that happens to all of us, each and every one of us. If you're new here and you would like to subscribe and join the familia, please do like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. We do go live here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern for an all signs. Uh, the one coming up this week, if you're watching this right now, is going to be uh, focusing on the new moon, or sorry, full moon in Gemini energy coming up. And so looking at the similar planetary movements this week, we've got a lot of like seven, eight swordsy interference coming in. You're going to be feeling more um, anxious, more nervous, that type of a thing, getting up into your feels. Um, a lot of like overthinking and overreacting happening, especially with the Mars, Mercury, Venus conjunct happening. Um, that actually does lead very often times not to relationship stress, especially in matters of money. So we'll take a look at that, how to go through it, because what we've got happening on uh, Monday, starting from Monday, going through the week ahead, you've got the Sun in Sagittarius, back into a fire sign from Scorpio, so a little more extroverted than uh, what we've been dealing with. And you've got the Moon in Aquarius. That's an awesome combination with Sagittarius's quest for knowledge, coupled up with Aquarius's thirst for adventure. Um, both of these two signs together often interact very well and it allows Sagittarius to focus more on their thoughts, similar to an air sign. Um, much like how Sagittarius would be similar to the fire signs Taurus, if you look at the air side of things, Sagittarius is very similar to Aquarius. Um, and we also have coming up this week, one of three Aries points, and that is when an element or a planet goes into a cardinal sign, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. We've got a lot of stuff kind of lining up into Capricorn, um, full moons, we've got the conjunction of Mars and Mercury, all this affecting Venus, so a lot of um, air signs, a lot of um, word energy, and coupled up with the Capricorn, anytime you get that way, it amplifies the extrovertedness, the way you feel, the way you project yourself, your Kim Valesse side of things, everyone as you pushed out. So we'll take a look at this as we go, because but as you go through this, also the moon will hit an Aries point over the weekend as it goes from Aquarius through Pisces in the end of the week and then off into Aries um, for the weekend. So you start getting double fire with the Sag and the moon both hit, uh, sun and the moon both hitting in Sag and Aries. Um, so you see more of Sagittarius's mutableness coupled up with Aries cardinal sign, Aries point, a zero degree Aries point, a cardinal point. So let's see what we got. The bottom of the deck, what we're talking about, we're going to be looking at four of wands, wishes, fulfillments, completions, and manifesting and intentions. And this is something that you need to watch out for because right now, especially Monday and Tuesday and in the beginning of the week, you do have a lot of seven, eight swords, like I was talking about, where you're in your fields about stuff you've manifested, about situations at home, situations in the workplace, and you got to try to work through these things working towards that full moon manifestations and when you hit a full moon how everything starts executing so that that just kind of being in your element and and ex analyzing and accessing everything and with a prince of swords energy the princess of swords cutting through the bs kind of thing um remember the brain can only process the similar emotions for nervousness and anxiety and excitement they're all kind of the same so you can go nine of swords at that point because you will start wanting to overthink and overanalyze much, much like i was saying with the conjunctions of mars and mercury to venus you know venus is the dreamy female lovey-dovey you know passion fire desire energy to communicative mercury and mars aries little uh manager set up there so you've got the male and female thing happening that causes a lot of that interaction but as you go three of pentacles and you realize that you're working with what we're dealing with as the moon goes from aquarius through pisces and you start to get a little more dreamy and it, it's also as we work towards approaching the high point or the midpoint of Sagittarius season where Sag's energy is in full effect as opposed to on the cusper sides at the beginning and the end. So that will be Princess of Pentacles energy where you start to ground out a little bit more. Um, you'll What will happen as the moon gets through Pisces is it grounds out, st stabilizes itself more 
and you start being able to high priestess energy, you know, think of Pisces cards, the moon, the high priestess, and it allows you when you go into your head and your feels to come to a more grounded, stable um, conclusion, something that's a much more balanced and more practical outcome, especially if it's like a work decision or something that relates to like dealing with money situations at home. Oh my goodness. We pull the high priestess is the next card. Literally what I was just saying, the Pisces energy. This also is going to couple up with Neptune going direct later this week too. So Pisces gets a little higher activated. High priestess is sometimes ties to Cancer and Virgo, but is most commonly known as a Cancer Pisces connection. And it's tapping more into your intuition because she has all the abundance and everything that she has wanted from while she's been doing her manifestations. So focusing on your wishes and going through the Nine of Swords energy to kind of stay balanced when that anxiety kicks in and also realizing that, hey, this could also be excitement, more of nervousness. It's a fear of the unknown, which can be positive or negative. Oh, yep, Seven of Swords. Literally what I let off with, the energy at the bottom of the deck is Seven of Swords. Getting up in your feels, but Aquarius energy, much where the moon resides at in the beginning of the week. And as we're in the Tuesday, going to Wednesday, the moon goes void of any kind of planetary conjunction. It is just simply like on cruise control as it goes between Aquarius and Pisces. So Tuesday, the moon doesn't do much to us. It's just riding through. That's like, you know, maintain speed and heading. Embrace the feelings as they come and understand that the moon's effect on us is not, it's no bueno right now. It's, it, it's going to be cruise control, but then it's going to start to kick back in and it's going to be ramping up as it goes through Pisces into the full moon energy. That Pisces dreamy intuitive energy starts to kick in and starts energizing the moon as we head that way. Yeah, emperor energy. This shows that as so long as you stay focused and grounded and deal with the with the the conjunctions that are happening in the planetary movements, it puts you in an emperor energy that you can embrace it. it I look at this time as a positive one because we're not looking at a person for much. We're looking at the way you can embrace and work with the energies the planets are putting on us right now, Wheel of Fortune. And embracing an emperor energy because this emperor um under this whole new world regime we'll call it with the universe i mean look at everything she can do between having uh she's on the computer she's taking notes there's dinner on the stove it's showing how you can work with all these and you know more multitasking than bill gates on crack that type of a thing trying to write windows 95 all over again and it's turning the wheel and directing it see i look at this wheel like a safe dial and those angels are cracking a safe dial. So it's moving the wheel to the right places to set the tumblers to the proper forward momentum to get what you want, two of pentacles. Finding some balance and stability to accept the change and proceed forward cautiously in an empress energy underneath the princess of swords. Yeah. So you actually got a little divine royalty coming out too. These are all the aspects lining up and conjuncting so you can work with your with your masculine and your feminine energies. Because remember, when you check your birth charts, this might be a nine of swords moment for some y'all, but when you check your birth charts, we all got male and female energies inside of us, masculine and feminines. Four of cups. And that's showing that as you go through this, that four of cups energy is like, man, I have literally tried everything I got and I want to manifest what I want. So working with that nine of swords energy, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius puts you to that point, ace of wands. Fire and the passion of setting a new plan into motion and three of pentacles using the energies that the planetary motion, motion, motion in the ocean is doing to us right now helps you with five of swords going through that feeling of defeat and completion. I mean, check it out. Even though you got a couple working at it, this is almost like the kind of everybody's a winner except the blonde one over over here. She looks a little ticked off about the situation. But, um, you know, that's kind of the thing of having the yin and the yang so they both balance out. Even when you feel defeated, you got to work through it, Queen of Swords style. And that's taken that feeling of defeat, which Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius knows how to do. So focusing on your air placements will put you in the energy of a Queen of Swords where both of these people are working together with the energy to, you know, kind of watch the road ahead. And, you know, much like looking at a forecast, three of wands style to see that the energy is starting to balance out. We get out of that anxious, nervous feeling that we've got going on so much that is carried on from Scorpio season and through our manifestations um, in the new moon and sabs that we just went through, Scorpio energy death, that as you proceed forward and start tapping into your intuition, high priestess more, you manifest this new beginning, death out with the old and with the new. Filing away the stuff that made you feel bad before and just ready to proceed forward, looking for a new house because you got the other one on the market already. Eight of cups. Totally. Look at the research this chick's doing so that she can walk away from the stuff she doesn't want to. And then remember in any card, even in tarot, when they talk about, okay, eight of cups is walking away. Well, you don't walk into a brick wall. You're going to be walking towards something if you're walking away from something. And this girl is doing all the research needed to proceed forward, actually looking up like intuition, astrology, much like you're doing right now, so that you can come out happy in the end. The sun. 
So if you focus in that way, Seven of Swords, get up in your feels, but totally keep it real much like your, check your air placements. If you got Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius placements, that's how you can manifest a happy outcome as we go through the weekend and enter into, um, you know, the Aries energy as the moon passes through that and you just kind of start feeling a little better, a little more positive, a little happy. The warm, fuzzy feeling comes in. Love it. So make it a good week and we will do this again later. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. I love interacting with y'all. And um, if you'd like a personal reading with me, feel free to email me at archerastrology at gmail.com and we'll set it up. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you later. Yeah, cheerio.